<laughs> Black Star. I was listening to them today too. They dropped their first album in 24 years. They dropped it on Luminary. Um, you know, so a lot of people are wondering where they can actually get the album. Coop and I talked about it. We were like, look, man, we have to listen to the album because we got to talk about it. And I, look, it's $4.99 for the uh, monthly subscription. You have to have a Luminary subscription to actually listen to the album. I had no problem with the $4.99 I spent. I think this album was well worth it. And this other podcast on the Luminary platform. Now, they didn't pay us to say any of that. I'm just saying. But Black Star's album... Whew. No fear Hold of time. Hold on, Mike, and let's clarify. I purchased separately from you to make sure that we were both in support of it and not. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Right. You know, I I guess I want to go ahead and get this part of it out of the way. You know, there was an NPR interview mm-hmm. that Talib was talking about that part of the process, and he said some things that I disagree with. Um, mm-hmm. he, he said that it doesn't he was addressing the reason why it's on this platform. And I think the interviewer at NPR, she asked him, you know, do you basically feel like you're sidestepping your progress by, you know, not putting it on streaming platforms uh, just based on the accessibility of it? Because that's where everybody is and that's where everybody uh, accesses their music from. And Talib was like, it doesn't matter what the fans want. It matters what Black Star wants. And listen. And oh, the part, I think the part that got me too is when he was like, fans coming up to him saying that they have been they were buying the first Black Star album. He was like, him and most didn't see any of the money from that that went to Universal. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a whole lot of problems I had with that is number one that, you know, you can't knock the fans. And, you know, I think that the fans, it is about the fans, number one, because without the fans, you're just making music for yourself. I mean, without you guys here talking with us and supporting this show and supporting this machine, it's just me and Coop sitting here talking. And, I mean, we had a situation, uh, you know, similar, you know, we're not most up in Talib, but we had a situation similar to this a couple of weeks ago when we wanted to change the time. But the time wasn't conducive to the rest of the fans, so whatever the fans want, I mean, that's what keeps this show running, so we do what you guys want. You know what I'm saying? And I think to say something along the lines of what the fans want doesn't matter, it's very off base. I understand where he was coming from. There's a better way to say that. Um, just say that, look, if you truly want to support your artist, this is how you do it. You don't have to sit there and say what the fans want doesn't matter. I think the fans want to support you because at the end of the day, those fans that went out there and bought that album, that you say the money went to Universal, those same fans went to your shows. They supported you in other ways that directly benefited you. They went out there and followed your podcast, followed you on social media because of those things. So to act like because whatever contract you signed, the money that they put down went somewhere else is their fault, I think is very off base. A lot of it is off base. That's not too startling, uh, giving uh, the person who is... uh, you know, expressing and uh, giving us I, this information. I think he has a bad habit of lashing out at fans, and I think that's very misdirect. Well, that's exactly actually something that I wanted to highlight. Thanks for kind of like helping me connect that dot. It mm-hmm. always seems like he places his fan base and Black Star's fan base in the middle of his label and music business issues, and right. it's like. No, that's not a problem with your fans or fan base or Black Star fan base. That's a problem with you, your lawyer, your accountant, your business manager, and how those affairs get handled. Right. And <clears throat> and this is just one of those things, and I hate this, and it's sad to say, it's like, well, how many times do we have to hear this story in hip-hop? about people not getting paid, Mike, before, like, young black men who are astute and forthright 
as as somebody like Talib is and take some business classes or maybe hire somebody who has before you sign these contracts so that you're not in these situations where you're literally blaming the fans for checks that you don't receive when really when really the, like like that has to do with your business management handling and practices and i can understand as a young black man who's made a ton of financial mistakes mike i made a ton of financial mistakes in my life and it's because i wasn't educated properly and it wasn't until i started educating myself properly that those things began to change so i can understand what it looks like but you can't sit up there and sit and keep blaming the fans for like you know quite frankly for what you weren't aware of uh privy to uneducated on didn't handle your motherfucking business properly. The fans this did everything they were supposed to do. Correct. They went out they there and supported it. the music. The music that was presented classic, to them. Right? They called that first album classic and I still don't think it's a classic. The way that this album just played is part of the reason why I don't think the first album is a classic. <laughs> okay, we're going to get into the actual album. Let me get to the uh, Super Chats real quick. Vincent said 444 is not a classic. If Jay comes outside, he needs at least an American Gangster. I totally agree with that. Uh, Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I know y'all have um, y'all have to review the Black Star, but I feel like uh, you graduated from hip-hop, then you shouldn't uh, be led on campus. Especially if you're telling the media you're bored or restricted by rap. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that, again, it's very misdirected when you're coming at the fans for things that they're just trying to support, man. Like, and I think even with the Luminary situation, a lot of people had, you know, their own opinions. I even had my opinion about, you know, possibly doing a pop-up shop or whatever. I don't really have a problem with how they uh, did this rollout. I get it after hearing the album. I think it's worth that subscription. Whatever deal they worked out with Luminary, excuse me, that's fine. That's on them. But again... To lash out on the fans when this right. album is released, like, look, just be like, look, we don't get paid from that, and that's fine. It's what it is. But mm -hmm. here is your opportunity to support us with fresh new music. And honestly, you know what? It's worth it because this group sounds like a whole new group. I mean, 24 years later, I think anybody would be a whole new artist, right? Um... Mad Lib, I would say, is the MVP of this album. Me personally, Talib showed the fuck up on this album. He did his thing on here. He sounds great over Mad Lib. I don't think I've really heard Talib over Mad Lib like that. Not continuously. And most Def, he sounded, he sounded like sonically and approach-wise... He was probably the catalyst of this whole thing coming together the way it did and the vision part of it. Most Def's pen game is special, man. And and I say that because his inflection and all that's not where it once was on the previous Black Star album, but his pen is so awesome that He's just, he's otherworldly to me, man. I, I've said this on shows before. Most of one of the most naturally talented MCs I've ever heard in my life. And once again, this proves it. And this album, from beginning to end, is awesome. I want to see some visuals for it. I, and I love the fact that there's an album out there that people actually have to pay for. And everybody doesn't have access to. But I'm glad that it's at this quality, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Because if I would have spent four ninety nine and it was subpar, I would have been disappointed. Um, but it's a risky game you play, and I think they won that risk. I agree. So <clears throat> all of your sentiments and mine almost echo each other. Now, let me tell you the only other times where your sentiments and mine, because literally, Mike, all of your notes line up with all of my notes. I think I just had details about the notes that you just provided. And so we're going to get to that in a second. Okay. But I just want to say, just to kind of put this album in context, I think the only time that you and I have pulled up to this show 
and rated an album and where the notes matched up about how we felt about the album from beginning to end and even down to the notes was Pray for Paris and Magic. Yeah. Now, what does that say about this project? So I let's think KD2 as right well. well. I know KD2, kind of, I was taken back, taken aback when I heard you, you, you were more taken aback than I was. I was more like coronation ceremony time. Yeah. But... <clears throat> let's let, let's go to some of your specifics of some of your Hold points, up. before which... you get to that part let me get to these super chats real quick so because i want to hear all of the extensive notes you have for this project because it's a beautiful project jason yeah. says uh fellas to my peeps in the chat like the show to help more visibility of the show on youtube people need to know about this show i appreciate that jason yes everybody Hit that like button so the visibility goes up. Hit that subscribe button if you hadn't already subscribed to this show. Uh, Ray Realms with the Super Chat says, Do up, Black Ray? Star, Kendrick Lamar, and Andre 3000 have the same manager? If so, he could care less about the fans. <laughs> That's funny. Andre okay. sends notes to uh, Rolling Stone. Okay, go ahead. So, actually, with my notes, I want to kind of start with what I sent you when I heard this uh, the, the other day. Mm -hmm. I said, this is masterful. I said, this is a great production job by Mad Lib. And then after that, Mike, I texted you. I said, I said they kind of put some pressure on Kendrick Lowkey because this style of music that they just made is in his type of pocket and they delivered in a major way on every level. And so let's talk about the levels and mm -hmm. let's start with your and my and my MVP. Mike, my, my first note about this album right under the rating for it is Mad Lib is the MVP. Mad Lib is in the running for producer of the year right now, too. Mad Lib's the producer of the year right now. This production job is stellar. Mike, this is what I would call, and I couldn't think of anything else to call it, but futuristic boom bap. It's futuristic boom bap. It's next level. It's like they're like they're like swinging for like you know they're like swinging for Mars and like hitting Jupiter production wise, like on this, like it's out of space and it, it's beautiful. The backdrops, uh, just everything about it is masterful. You know what Yassine Bey kind of reminded what? me of on here? I saw a little remnants of uh, of Doom, of MF Doom, um, you know, just because working with Mad Lib, obviously, you know, Yassine is a big MF Doom fan. Anyway, I'm sure he studied a lot of Doom to, you know, work with some of Mad Lib stuff. Or maybe it organically happened because he's a Doom fan. But you know what I mean? It's got some of the quirky genius that Mad Villainy does production wise. Mm -hmm. yes. Like you hear some of that quirky genius that Mad Lib is capable of. You hear some of that on a uh, pinata too. Mm -hmm. You know, so so like he has those moments. But here's what I would say to all of that, and even to those comparisons. This sounds even like some next shit from that. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. This, this even even for that, and even for those comparisons, and they're insightful and they're accurate it still is not doing an appropriate job of like, quite frankly, expressing the zone that this guy got in. Like, like beat wise, mm -hmm. as he did, I mean, <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna say this like, like kind of tongue in cheek. Well, he got the best out of both of these guys at this stage and I don't know what other producer could have done that too. He's the MVP on a few levels because, well, let's go to this. You were talking about Talib. Well, here's my insightful note about Talib. He's actually as polished as ever on this album. Mm -hmm. MSNBC, he's never actually sound this polished, this articulate. Um, Vernacular-wise, he is toggling back and forth rhyme-wise the way most actually used to. Most is more of the soul of this album. Talib is the spitter on this album. Yeah, he is the spitter on this album, and he sounds and he sounds wonderful. Mad Lib has bought out the best in Talib on this album. This is his best mic performance, in my opinion, like as far as hearing him on one project. And that includes Train of Thought. And that definitely includes the first Black Star album, which is not as good as this album. It this has album better is better than the first Gangstar. I'm not Gangstar album. This is better than the first Black Star album. It is. The first Black Star album has maybe like two songs that are better maybe than everything on here. But after that, it's all this album. You understand what I'm saying? Like after that, it's all this album. Like this is next level 
shit that we're hearing from them. And you know what I loved about this? Not to cut you off. Most to work on a black star. I'm mad they got most star, most depth to work on a black star album. It's like get get like <laughs> this is what I had down about most. Mike. Mm-hmm. most is thoughtful and insightful on this album, but it's with clarity. He's always thoughtful and insightful, but sometimes he's all over the goddamn place and it's hard to hear how thoughtful and insightful he is. It's like mad lib. That's what I'm saying. It's like, well, they're swinging for the Mars, but running to Jupiter, but it's like, well, they're not running so far that you can't see him with the telescope. Like most is running just far enough that you can see him. And a lot of that has to do with the construction of mad lib's production on this album. It's masterful. Ray Realms with the Super Chat says, Sonically, uh, the Black Star album is album of the year thus far. Edging out uh, <laughs> Self Love by um, Love the Genius and uh, the Elzai album and Georgia Ann uh, Mudro. Um, look, this is what I love about this album. I love the fact that it wasn't reminiscent rap. I didn't know what I was going to expect to hear, but usually when, you know, a group comes back together or they took a long break, you hear about what they used to do, what they used to mean to the game, what hip hop used to be like. It's none of that. Like you said, this is some other shit. Like this is on some futuristic. Well, they're damn near a whole new group. This ain't even the same group. This is a whole new group. I and mean, I love gonna it. About, we're going to talk about them all the time as a duo because here's what they do have. Well, they had two definite stellar projects under their belt. Okay, yeah. like 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 that's 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 definitely for certain. Um, I don't even know where you want to get into the highlights of this album. Let's or get to the highlights going? of this album. I don't have the track list up because I, I couldn't. Got it. I'm you got the right now. I got the track list here, but I don't have it on the screen where people can yeah. see it because you know it wasn't really available at a lot of places. But go ahead, go, uh, go to some of your sweetheart. highlights. The sweetheart, sweetheart, hard, sweet odd. Yeah, that's beautiful, Mike. They need a visual <laughs> aid for that. The sweetheart, sweetheart, sweet odd. That needs a visual aid. Yeah, right now. No, it no, no. For me, right now. I think so. Be it needs a visual aid. To be honest with you, you want you want to know? I thought after hearing it about the third or fourth time, I was like, well, the whole thing actually needs a little mini movie visual aid player from beginning to end putting the songs in sequence but making it kind of like like streets is watching futuristic style like where you kind of play the songs through but it tells kind of like a some sort of story that's mm-hmm. actually what i thought my favorite band the main thing is to keep the main thing might be like the um that's the black star song on this album where it's like well that's the black star that people know and love that is a uh, kind of like a. Uh, updated and not antiquated at all you know it's like well yeah. these are that's the grown man version of those b-boys that you heard that were younger men you know mm-hmm. and it's beautiful i think i think we all know what most is doing on yonders yeah man i think we but all know is... what most is doing on yonders and, and that's no disrespect to talib because talib comes off extremely nice on yonders There's so but many quotables about, on this whole album man you know, I think... album full of quotables so is ransom's album but when yeah. you're talking about that pin game mike Yonders is what you're talking about when you're talking about most pin game. It's one when of the I'm best rappers about, I've ever talking, heard in my life. Like when he starts talking about how the devil be running because he because he's uh, the devil be running because he can smell me coming. Like when yeah. he starts doing stuff like that. Yeah. No, no, you can't. <laughs> this shit is crazy, man. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you don't. Yeah, Supreme, man. Supreme alchemy. Like, Mike, this is why I feel the way I feel about this album. This is like, I don't know what the best song is, but I know there's a bunch of them. Supreme Alchemy, the Frequency Joint with Black Thought. I mean, Black Thought has a Rhyme of the Year candidate verse on here. It's the only guest appearance on there, really. And and look look who they invited to the party. And, And he does what he usually does when he invites, gets invited to the party, shows out on everybody. And that's including these guys. It's it's a beautiful project. It's the album of the year. And this is and I want people to understand something too. You know, a lot of people pull up on me and you and say that we take things personally and we're biased. Now, personally, I don't I like almost nothing that uh Talib does. And as far as work ethic is concerned, he's not uh Kendrick Lamar or, or Andre three thousand, but most is definitely in the wheelhouse. That don't change shit about how great this album is. You feel what I'm saying? 100%. Talib, 
That was brilliant. It is. And I I don't know what else to say about it. And I think it's album of the year so far. I'm just going to say that. I'm sorry. I had to block somebody that was in the chat. They were all off subject. Talking about Desert Storm and all this stuff. I don't don't know what they were talking about. Um, Yeah. You know, (laughs) what's traumatic stress disorder is real? I, yeah, I got this as album of the year so far. Um, it, it's it got incredible replay value. I've been listening to it all today and yesterday. I don't know if it's a psychological thing when you go and actually spend money on an effort when you're usually just able to stream things whenever at will. I don't know if that's part of it too, but sonically, this album's worth it. And... Um, it, I just hate that um, I hate it took this long and but see with them maybe because they've been out here as individuals mm-hmm. I don't look at this as like I've been waiting 24 years for this because no. we've been getting collaborations from them ever since now if for whatever reason let's just say Andre and Big Boy or Big Boy said that you know what we're putting the album up on Luminary next week for four ninety or whatever, however they want to do it, right? Yeah. I think that that will feel a little different because we haven't truly gotten an outcast effort in 22 years. Now, with as far as like most Def and Talib, we get collaborations from them and we get individual efforts from them enough where and then we only got one black star album so it doesn't feel like much of a void was left you know you guys made a collaborative album and you went solo like immediately and so when you talk about all-time duos and stuff i still think they're limited in that department too because now they got two efforts which i think are two really dope efforts this one in my opinion, leans closer to classic than the the first one. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, I mean, are you sure you got definition, redefinition, brown skin lady, and and, uh, respiration? Even though I still think respiration is probably the best song that the group has ever made. But from end to end, and how far ahead this shit sounds, I think this is going to... I think this is going to be a classic. So, so listen to what I'm about to say. And this is why Mad Lib is the MVP. This album sounds like, well, if they don't make another album together for another 10, 15, 20 years, you have a satisfying piece of work that is going to hold over that course of time, Mike. I listened to this album again today from beginning to end two more times to make sure, Mike, this I, album... I, yeah. A five. I'm confident. I'm five. confident. You're giving it a five. I'm giving it the five, Mike. It's a five. You know There's what? Nothing. I'm staying at four point seven five, and the only reason I'm not giving it a five giving is because most death doesn't sound as enthusiastic as Talib. It's the only no, knock yeah, I have I, on this album. Other than that, this shit is what? a piece no, of work. This that, shit is art. That was that was my that was my hesitant point. And so let's unpack that point right quick. Most vocally is not who he used to be. And even intent and intensity wise, not who he used to be. On the former, as far as the intent and the intensity. Well, I can't knock him for that because, well, DMX wasn't that way. Nas wasn't that way. and Jay wasn't that way. The intent and the intensity is not the same when you get older. So we can't knock most for it when we don't knock those other guys for it. When those guys become thoughtful and introspective and toned down and versatile, we embrace that. So we need to embrace that. Now, vocally, he's not where he used to be, but Mike. But the pen game is. The pen game is, and I think people have not heard this album enough to hear, no, 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 he's still rhyming his ass off on here because I went and checked two times today just to be sure because that was my hesitancy about giving it the five. It's like, well, most isn't the most that used to be. Well, first of all, the most that used to be most, Mike, that's the type of guy that when we talk talent and skill-wise could have been the greatest MC who ever lived. Okay? Yeah, as far as like having the, the skill set to do yes. everything. 
So so we can't expect to hear that guy again. Because that guy, talent-wise, like was able to do all things. It's not fair. We don't hold anybody else and expect that of them 20 years later. You know? So it's not fair to hold them that standard. But what the standard for bars and rhymes and thoughtful and being introspective and rhythmic and, and like some of the bar and cadence and flow and rhyme patterns on here that he's exhibiting. Yeah. It's fucking stellar, Mike. It's advanced type of stuff. Yeah. These it's are things that you gotta understand what he's doing too, right? I think and these so, are the type of things and follow me on this. I think that if Outcast made this same exact effort, people could appreciate how advanced this shit is for what it is. I think certain people, we don't expect advanced shit from. Now, most has given us that, you know, over the past couple of years anyway, whenever he does drop things. But I think that they were such traditionalists when it comes to the boom bap that people don't want to let them move outside of that. And when they move outside of that, there is a, there's a certain, there's a certain group that doesn't love that. But like you said, when we were uh, talking offline, this is like some futuristic boom bap. And I don't even know if there's even boom bap in there. It's like some rock star shit that's actually rap shit. And, no, if, you and if Kendrick's able to make a better album than this, Kendrick's about to make a classic. You want to know what? <clears throat> Listen to what I'm about to say. This is how... <clears throat> when I'm saying boom bap, it's kind of like... It almost feels like Dilla was there production-wise a little bit, Mike. Yeah. That's how stellar the production. But when you think about it, man, all of these guys were around all of those things, man. And I feel like <laughs> we're gonna get into this individual in a minute. I feel like Q-Tip was in the studio too. I feel like Kanye right. was in the studio right. too. How, like right. these guys how heard this effort. This is right. some other shit. Right. This is this is the concerted uh, effort of, yeah. of all of that. And, Dave and Chappelle's in there. All that shit. Yeah, yeah, it's all in there. You hear these it. These forward there. thinking people. Yeah. Yeah, this album is all of that. Q tips right. hearing this shit in the studio. Kanye's right. in there. I feel like yeah. Kanye and Most Def got so much in common, man. Yes, yes. Yeah. How about this? This is the album that I've been wanting Kanye to make. No. This is the album I've been wanting Ye to make. Real like, shit. And some of this stuff is about to hold, Mike, like frequency with Black Thought. That shit's about to hold. That might be the best rap song this year. Supreme Alchemy, that's about to hold. Yonders is about to hold. The main thing to keep the main thing, it's about to hold. My favorite band, no, Mike, there's shit all over here. It's, I'm giving it five. You're giving it a five. You're giving it a well, five. Well, y'all hear it here first. Coop is giving Black Star's album a five. I'm not yeah. mad at that. I'm kind of on the four, seven, five. We can wait and see. We can wait and see. But. Yeah. So far, let's give a let's give a, a quick history of all the albums that we've given a five. We well, weren't on, we weren't online when Daytona came out. We, hold on, we need to go revisionist history because we need to make a change to something because there's an album that we need to upgrade to a five, but we didn't give a five. Okay. That's Alfredo by Freddie Gibbs. Okay. So Freddie Gibbs actually, Alfredo that's five. The, that's one of the first albums that we actually rated on here live, Mike. It might have been the second or third album we ever rated on here live, actually, if memory serves. Yeah, and it was like three people watching us. We appreciate all three, too. Yeah, we appreciate all three of you who were watching us rate Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> right? But I would, I would say that Gibbs' Alfredo would be our first five. Okay. And then shortly thereafter, it would be Pray for Paris, which would come a month later, roughly. And then it would be KD2 roughly 18 months later. And then Magic. And then this. So this would be the fifth five. People are saying they didn't hear the five. Uh, Mad Max says, LOL. Mm. Y'all jocking. It's a, it's a five because I didn't hear it. Oh, he thinks that we're just saying that because people ain't heard it. Listen. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm not saying that. Like, I'm saying that, like, okay, so... <clears throat> I didn't look at it from the perspective of people not hearing it. I looked at it in the perspective of the first thing that I realized about this album is that I think it's about to hold extremely well. And that matters when you're going to call something a classic or give it a perfect rate. You I have think. to hear something that's going to hold. I've listened to this album nonstop for the last couple of days. Mike, with no problem. That's, that, that's classic stuff. Like, it's not normal to listen to an album seven, eight, nine, ten times in the span of two days. 
unless there's something stellar going on about the music. Unless the music is really like gravitating and grabbing you like that. No, the, that the is there. The, it's, listen to what I'm saying. Mad Lib is the MVP of this album, and most Def and Talib probably are the guys that are rhyming. What do you think this album sounds no, like? No, real shit. <laughs> and the only feature is Black Thought. The only feature is Black Thought. And he yeah. might have rhyme. Look, and he is in contention for rhyme of the year with some of Talib's and with, with hold on, with like two of Talib's verses on here. One of Moses' verses on here, and like two ransom verses, like like it's crazy. There's nothing wrong with this album. I mean, <clears throat> most with the, most with the is, lazy flow is the only thing you can say about it. But like I told you, I think that most coming with that lazy flow was more so on purpose because you see people like Andre Three Thousand do stuff like that too, so you can pay attention to the actual well, words and not their inflection and get caught up in the flow. Or get right. caught up in all this other stuff because he doesn't even use ad libs or anything. He's just well, telling you what it is. Well, delivery wise, too, I don't think people. <clears throat> how about this? People understand how hard it is to catch every other bar instead of just the straight boom. Mm hmm. Boom. When you can catch the, the boom and then it. Boom. No, you special. Rigor yeah. with the super chat says, Peace, y'all. Black Star is ridiculous. It is. Hot. They delivered. They did. They delivered. They deliver. I'm not saying we should have had to wait 24 years for it, but I am saying that when I listen to the production, it's not a question of the production is flawless. And if and if your critique is that most deaf isn't the MC who could have been the greatest MC of all time, if that that's the critique, then it's them sticking to the five because it's like, well, he's still pretty fucking stellar in relationship to everybody else out here. Like, like MC wise, most right now would still be on the back end of the top 10 of MCs based on the stuff that I heard of here. Like right now, you understand that? It's like, is he like Nas or Conway or Ransom right now? It's like, no, but he probably like, or, or even thought, but nah, he, he got one step down because he's insult insightful and thoughtful enough, and you almost feel like with the way that he's rhyming on some of these joints on him, on here, that if you poke at him a little bit more, that guy still exists somewhere. Like, I mean, no. he has like one-liners on here that you're like, wow. Wow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, the one-liners take out verses, and, and those are some of the things that I miss from certain lyricism. lyricism. It's like, he'll say something and, uh, you know, I'm on live camera right now, so I'm frozen. I can't think of the one that I'm thinking of off top. But he'll say one phrase, and you're like, damn, that was deep. And then just keep going. And mm -hmm. he did that throughout the whole album, man. Um, I think I think, I think, think a very appropriate example of, like, his one-line game, and this is what I mean, you can't expect this guy to exist anymore. The mm -hmm. guy that did the verse on What's Beef, that's the guy that I'm talking about that could be the greatest MC of all time. Man, that guy don't exist. That's like asking Nas to rap like the guy on Illmatic and it was written again. That's why <laughs> what he just did with Magic is like, hold on, like that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. All right, so right. let's go yeah. over the uh, projects that we've given fives to since we've been on air. Yeah. Alfredo, Freddie Gibbs, and, um, and Alchemist. Yeah. That's Pray for Paris, West Side Gun. KD2, Nas, Magic, Nas, right. Black Star, No, fear of, no time. fear of Time. Yeah. I think it's that's a pretty good five right there. It's not personal. There's nothing personal about it. That's why I'm saying is it's like, because over the course of time, too, because remember when we rated Alfredo, we put From a King to a God slightly ahead of it because of Conway's lyrical performance, because we felt like even though Gibbs was like masterful on Alfredo, Conway was better lyrically. But the music of Alfredo has held up better over the course of the time. And when you go back and listen to Alfredo and how it plays now, and listen to how From a King to a God plays, it might be like structurally Alchemist's best project, even if beat-wise it's not his best project in terms of the organization and the composition of the songs in terms of how they flow. Alfredo play, plays beautifully, like, because before you know it, it's like, well, you're on you're on baby shit, and, like, the record's almost over. If that's song seven, you're like, hold on. You're like, what just happened? That's why oh, these that, yearbooks that we do are so important, man. Like, you know, we're getting that feedback from the people, and we're, we're putting this in print, and we're putting this, like, you know, in digital form, in tangible form, where you can actually go back and see these things. Actually, the description in the description of this video, excuse me, 
uh, is how you can go get the yearbook either on Amazon you get the physical one or we got the digital copies available too so we're giving this a five hey and you want to know what go ahead <clears throat> I don't care what type of fan that you are it's hard for you and this is why a part of it is a five too I want you to understand all of these albums that we've given fives to when I listen to them I don't necessarily hear what they're doing first, I hear hip hop first, and that's even what I hear with this album for as futuristic as it sounds. It's hip hop. Mm -hmm. you not There's love no hip -hop question. Be, how can you not love hip hop and be like attracted to it and addicted to it? It's like you're really a fan of it. This is one of those albums that make you love hip hop because some of the records that just come on, it's like, no, 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 play that. That's how I was today. I was like, because I, I wanted to see if I wanted to skip records. Yeah. I was like, no, play that. I was like, no, play that. I need to hear that again. And no, I wanted no, to play, play it loud, too. No, 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 play that again. Yep. No, 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 I want to hear that again. Like, when the band plays on, when most come in, I was about to skip the record, and then he came in, and I was like, oh, no, no, no. I was like, I remember what he did yesterday. Play that again. And you know what people need to understand, too, and I'm sure most people who watch this show, you've been very critical of Black Star, too. So been. for you Not to say these that. things about this album, I mean, it, it goes a long way. Cause I was thinking the same thing. I'm sitting now. Actually, you heard it first, and then you told me because I was running around yesterday, and you was like, when I got that text from you, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh shit, Coop likes it. <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm more of a Black Star fan than you are. You are. And um and so yeah, when you were saying those things, I was like, oh yeah. I look at the music, Mike. It's the music at the end. The music of the day. at the end of the day. Uh, shout out to DJ Twitch uh, with the $20 Super Chat. He says, much appreciation, my Gs. Your knowledge and respect for the culture is definitely needed and respected. We really appreciate that, and we appreciate y'all, and y'all respect and knowledge of the culture, too. That yeah. might be a good segue. It's a two-way street. Yeah. Three. 